I was shocked to learn that most diseases that kill us are actually a result of poor metabolic health. What are these diseases that poor metabolic health leads to? Yeah, so we can look at the top 10 causes of death in the United States every year. And, you know, actually the last two years, this list has expanded to the top 11 causes of death. And we can go down the list one by one and see that most, if not all of them, are related to poor metabolic health. The number one killer in the United States and worldwide is heart disease, and that is clearly related to poor metabolic health. Cancer, number two on the list, many forms of cancer, not all of them, but many forms of cancer have been clearly attributed to poor metabolic health. Of course, the last two years, we all know that, you know, the number three on the list has been COVID, and that is clearly related to poor metabolic health. We knew from early on in this pandemic that people who are metabolically unhealthy were more likely to get COVID in the first place and then more likely to suffer serious consequences from COVID. And the biggest regret that I have around how COVID has been handled is that we didn't focus on metabolic health. We could have been telling people early on one of the key strategies to getting out of this pandemic would be focusing on metabolic health eating whole real food, getting more exercise, getting better sleep. And instead, we kind of did the exact opposite. We closed the gyms. We told people to stay inside. We said, eat all the comfort food you want. Unfortunately, I think that has worsened this whole experience. And then as you keep going down the list, you have things like chronic kidney disease and diabetes, infections related to poor metabolic health. And number 10 or 11, depending on how you're looking at the list, uh, is a real interesting one because suicide is in the top 10 causes of death every year. And it turns out that there is a clear relationship between metabolic health and mental health. And uh, there's now a growing experience around this. I know psychiatrists uh, and psychologists who are incorporating metabolic health improvement into the treatment of their psychiatric patients and seeing great improvements in mental health when you improve your metabolic health. When you look at it through that lens, everyone should be talking about metabolic health. Every physician should be talking about metabolic health. And unfortunately, we're not yet, but I think more and more people are waking up to this. People are understanding this. Well, just look at how the mental health issues and suicide had went skyrocketing through the roof during COVID. So not only are you isolated, you're out of, you don't have any more community, you're locked in your, your house, you're nervous, you're scared, and you're trying to find anything to pacify you to get this through. So you're just sedentary, you're, watching, you're trying to binge on movies, you're eating garbage, uh, no wonder. It almost seems like we did the exact opposite of what we should have been doing to deal with this uh, pandemic. And both the physical health aspects have gotten worse during the past two years, as have the mental health aspects, you know, during the past two years. And ultimately, you know, we are now in a situation where our country is on the brink of bankruptcy trying to deal with our poor health. For the first time, you know, that we have been tracking life expectancy here in the United States, it has now gone down the last two years. And that is the first time, you know, in in really recorded history that that has happened. Uh, So we really need to step back now. We need to question why this is so. And we really need to be starting to ask these basic questions about our food environment and our overall health environment and start taking some different approaches. 